Okay, I'm going in. All right, be careful. Someone say, kill this pain. Let's kill this pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's kill this pain. Painkillers are medicines that are able to block the processes that cause the feeling of pain. Hence the term painkillers. These miracle drugs have been around for many years, and thanks to them, many lives were saved. Literally. The word painkiller does not refer to only one type of drug, but it actually refers to a group of drugs that are used to relieve pain. It can be something you guys are more familiar with, such as the drug paracetamol in Panadol pills, or aspirin, which is a drug that is administered to patients after getting a heart attack. It can also be something even stronger, such as morphine. Even opium and alcohol were used as painkillers at some point of time. Just like how some of us are still using alcohol to heal the pain in our mind. <laughs> At this point, you're probably thinking, how do painkillers actually kill the pain? Before we get to that, let's talk about pain itself. We have nerves all over our body, and its purpose is to take in information via our senses, process the information, and trigger certain reactions. For example, if you fall down and injure yourself, electric signals travel through our nerves from the injured area and go to our brain. Our brain then realises, oh, you dum-dum, you fell down, and this will allow you to respond accordingly. So even though pain hurts, pain is important because it is an indication that something is wrong with your body and you should do something about it. Feeling no pain at all is actually dangerous. So how does your body cause the sensation of pain? Well, when you injure a certain part of your body, many chemicals are released, some of which cause the sensation of pain. The chemicals also send more blood to the area because the white blood cells in our blood are important to fight bacteria and to heal the injured area. So this is the reason why the injured area is often red, swollen and, well, painful. You can try to be a hero and thong the pain, but severe pain can actually send your body into shock and cause fatal damages to your organs and brains. And also, why would you choose to be in pain when you have the option to kill the pain? Painkillers basically either stop your body from making these chemicals that make you feel pain or they make these chemicals ineffective. To learn more about painkillers, we'll be heading into PSB Academy. PSB Academy offers multiple courses related to life sciences and one of the things that we'll be doing today is aspirin synthesis. In other words, we'll be heading to the labs to learn how to make aspirin. Hello, hello! Before we make them, we need to head all the way back to 4,000 years ago where people first discovered the ancient version of aspirin in willow trees. They learned that the bark and leaves of the willow trees can relieve pain and fever, so they collected them to eat. Then from there, scientists managed to find out what causes the pain-killing effect. Yes, I finally did it! <laughs> the scientific name of aspirin is called acetyl salicylic acid. So in order to create aspirin, we will need to recreate acetyl salicylic acid, following the footsteps of our ancestors. Willow trees and some other plants have a chemical called salicylate which can be extracted and isolated from the plants to get salicylic acid. The key to turning salicylic acid into aspirin is to replace the hydroxyl group here with acetyl group. This is done by combining salicylic acid with acetic anhydride. And the whole idea here is for the salicylic acid to coat the acetyl group from the acetic anhydride to replace its hydroxyl group. But just by combining these two ingredients alone is not enough. We need to spice things up. This catalyst is sulfuric acid and it destabilizes the acetic anhydride molecules, which then causes a chain of reactions, giving birth to aspirin. But there is the byproduct, acetic acid, that is formed during the reaction, which we will then have to remove. In chemistry, these are crystals. Do I just put it here? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Then I swirl, swirl. So you can see not everything dissolves, and that is supposed to happen because we are supposed to dissolve the acetic acid and not the aspirin itself. Because the aspirin will not dissolve in ice cold water. So we left there. Oh, 
no! Wow, it's an iceberg. How ah? Uh? It's okay, oh. Ignoring the few pieces of solid that went through, right? The water here is actually pretty clear. And we are left with the aspirin on top. Yay! And ta-da! We have aspirin! You just need great. Uh, Amazing! I'll take that off. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Alright, a quick history lesson on painkillers. 4,000 years ago, willow trees were used as painkillers. Fast forward to the 16th century, opium was discovered and recognised as a painkiller when it was actually mixed with alcohol. In the 1800s, morphine was then extracted from opium in its pure form and widely used during war times. But both opium and morphine led to addiction problems, so scientists and doctors have to look for another solution. In the late 1890s, aspirin was finally discovered by a German company followed by newer painkiller drugs such as ibuprofen and paracetamol, which is your Panadol, and these discoveries were only made possible because scientists managed to understand more about how painkillers work through aspirin. Such medical advancements are only possible thanks to the skills and knowledge of the people in the field of biomedicine. With constant research in this field, one can create life-saving drugs or treatments that can potentially change the world. If you wish to learn more about life sciences and are keen to pursue on this path but are not sure where to begin, maybe you should check out PSB Academy's open house happening on the 15th of January. PSB Academy offers life sciences courses from diploma up to postgraduate degrees. Intakes are open for the year 2022, so do check out the link below. That's all for today. Just keep thinking!